Hey, my name is Michael, and I just got my Motoped Survival 49cc uh, bicycle. And I wanted to go over some of the first impressions, some of the uh, modifications and upgrades that I've done to the bike since I've got it, and just share some of my initial customer experiences uh, while everything's still fresh in my mind. Okay, so from the videos and the pictures that have been online, you kind of know what the bike looks like stock. I got a 49cc motor on mine, the Leafon 49cc, because in North Carolina, as uh, many other states are following suit, this motor here, if it's not 49cc or less, it's illegal to uh, ride without motorcycle registration and insurance. So the 49cc motor is pretty good. And I've only had it now out for uh, a couple of days, sort of back roads driving. And one of the things I've noticed is it doesn't have a lot of low-end torque. Uh, once you're up to speed, though, once you get up around uh, 15, 20 miles an hour, it, it carries you pretty good on the high end. But on the low end, and I'll, I'll put some videos up following this one, it, it sort of doesn't have that low-end bicycle sort of granny climbing gear. Uh, it takes a while to get you going, and as a result, you'll find that you use the the pedals a lot to uh, get you up to speed. And, and this was a plus for me because I purchased this uh, to help me exercise, and uh, I wanted something that I would actually have to pedal when I was using. So that, to me, is not a game uh, ender feature. I actually like that as a feature. So let's talk about some of the other things here. One, I got the headlight option. I think that's a must-have. If you're going to get this bike and you don't have the headlight, uh, you're going to have a hard time driving it in the mornings and the evenings, and you won't get it registered. The second thing I did was I put a fender kit on there, and this was straight off of eBay. It was recommended to me by another Motorped user, and I'm going to show you underneath that we've just sort of modified it and used the original mounting post to go right into the lower tube. So I took off the main bracket that you're supposed to use to mount it, and I mounted this entire fender assembly to the underside of the tube and put a rivet on each side just so that I would have the ability to put a fender. If you try to ride this bike without the fender, it will kick up all anything that's wet, any puddle on the road, any sand, will end up on your helmet and your jacket. So, must have. I don't know why they don't ship with any kind of fender. It's uh, sort of ridiculous unless you're driving on an absolutely dry road. The very next thing I did is put these mirrors on the bike. These are mostly every part on here except the fender was from eBay. Everything else is from Amazon. And so, this came in two separate parts. I got the mirror kit from Amazon, and then I got the handlebar mounting assembly from Amazon as well. And so this part clamps to the 7 8 handlebar and then this part screws into the clamp and you can get them in the right hand and left hand side. They actually come in a kit that way. So mirrors absolute must if you're going to be riding this on the road and not on dirt roads and if you need to register them the mirrors are a must have for that bike. Next up is of course the horn. Now again, links are in the description. I found a horn switch on Amazon. This is Prime and you'll see the horn switch attaches in the back with a split clamp attached with a single uh, Phillips head screw on the back. The horn is a standard motorcycle horn and it comes with a standard two-wire switch and so a two-wire terminal connection rather. What we did was we bent the terminal of the horn back and we actually mounted it to this post screw here. There's a stainless steel screw goes straight to the post on the frame assembly. We mounted the horn straight to that and tied it into the 12 volt section so that now you satisfy the inspection requirements for a moped in your state. So most everything up until now is relatively simple for just about anybody to uh, manufacture and install. These are all simple add-ons that you can get online. 
uh, Amazon great source, but if you have a relatively simple mechanical background and uh, or electrical background, you can wire in and put those things on relatively easy. Here's where things got a little more complicated for us, and we thought that these were features that should sort of be factory additions. Uh, you're going to need a brake lamp assembly if you're going to get your moped registered in your state. If your bicycle in your state is required to follow moped laws, you need a rear tail light. And so there are a lot of options just to have a rear tail light, and that's an easy one. We'll go over the features of this one in a second. But the brake lamp is the challenge because on the motoped, there are no switches in the disc brake to tie off of. Standard motorcycles have a pressure switch that activates when the hydraulic fluid is activated, and it's very easy to tie a brake light into. But there are no switches on here. And so that's a really big challenge when you're trying to get your bike registered and ready for inspection. So I want to show you what we did and bring you up to speed on a couple of the things here. On the very front of the bike, you're going to see that we installed these mechanical switches right here. And so here's what we did. I replaced with my partner, actually my business partner did this for me, we replaced the center pin in the pivot for the handlebars with a threaded, I believe that's a 5 millimeter. uh bolt, I'm not sure. Again, all stainless. And that is a nylon lock nut. And then we custom fabricated these metal plates. And so I have two micro switches on either side so that when you depress the handlebar here, watch what happens to the switch. You see how the head falls away from the body of the handlebar? When that happens, it's a normally open switch. And when you pull it away, the switch closes. And so we made a pair of those for the front brake assembly on the right, as well as on the left hand side. And you'll see when you pull the brake away, the normally open switch closes and that activates and sends powers, power rather, back to the brake light assembly. Let me show you what that looks like from the rear. So here I'm just going to depress the brake lever with a broom handle that I've got. And you see how that LED tail light comes in when I pull them back? Your inspectors are going to look for that to see that when they press the brake pedals, that light comes on and off. Okay, so this entire assembly, everything that you see, the plastic reflector all the way up in the fender, including the light, and then the lamp for the license plate. This whole assembly, this plastic fender, is all one piece. So they give you the wires for the tail light, they give you the wires for the uh, lamp for the license plate, and they give you the wire for the brake light actuator, which makes the light even brighter. All of those come in the back of the fender. And if you need a description of which wire does what, just send me a link in the comments and I'll be happy to tell you what we pinned out to. The problem though is, A, if you don't have a fender at all on the rear wheel, remember how I told you on the front wheel if you didn't have a fender it was going to cover your front with mud? If you don't have a fender on the back wheel of this bike, it just trashes whatever jacket you're wearing. So no fenders on this bike. Uh, they tell you it's for off-road use, but when you ride it off-road, uh, where they'd expect you to ride it, I would imagine, your entire uh, front and back are covered with a strip of black mud. So we needed something to mount that kit to, and I want to show you what we did here. I'm going to stand up. We built a plate, and so we've got a piece of aluminum plate right here, and we used a self-tapping sheet metal screw into the front cross tube on the bottom, we cut the plate everywhere it needed to be notched. So everywhere you see these little spot, uh, these little welds on either side where there's a butt joint sticking out, we had to notch all those places for clearance. And then we left slots for the rotopack mounts to slide back and, back and forth between. But these screw heads right here are what's connecting the fender from the bottom to the top 
of this plate. So we're able to use this fender assembly, which I think is $20 or $30, and actually physically mount it to the back cargo area with a plate that also acts as a fender. So no mud gets over there. And it's just at the clearance where at full compression of the suspension, the back tire doesn't hit. So that worked out really well. I would hope Motoped in the future would offer this as some kind of upgrade uh, or maybe even incorporate it as some kind of standard feature. Now, one of the other things, if you choose to do it in our state, you don't have to have directional signals, but I want to show you something nice about this bike. Wiring in uh, signals for turning can be a pain in the ass on a bike like this because the harness that they give you doesn't have any place associated with signal turning points. So you can't just plug in a kit and go. I was told that they're working on a new harness, but as of right now, what you get in here gives you a spot to plug in a tail lamp on the back, and that's it. So there's two things that you can do that I've done here that I want to show you that are really easy on the motopeds. Number one, they sell these kits. They're called wing lights. And you'll see here I've attached this one uh, with a magnet base. And when you put the wing lights on your bike, all you have to do is bump it with your finger. And that becomes a directional light. So if you want to turn left, you literally just have to tap it with your hand and it becomes a directional light, okay? Similarly, and it'll blink for 20 seconds and stop if you forget. Similarly, on the right-hand side, if you just tap it, it becomes a directional light. Now these screw right into, they have a, uh, a body that if, if you turn it, it compresses into the, uh, the handlebar, which is a nice feature. So on both sides, you have to cut the rubber. On this side, you have to cut the throttle handle uh, body a little bit just to give clearance for that shaft to come through. Last but not least we have this base camp rear tail light assembly which is also a turning device. Uh, it has left turn, right turn and a really unique feature that I want to show you. Let me just get the controller here real quick. As we come up forward you'll see that I have this base camp controller that mounts to the handlebar assembly and it has uh, four buttons that you can push. Laser, Rear tail light, left turn, right turn. I want to bring it back to the tail light and show you how that works. Okay, so here's that controller. Watch what happens when I press left turn. See how it has that night rider push to the left hand side? That gives this bike a left directional turn without adding any wires. This is completely wireless. When I hit a right hand turn, you'll see that it does the exact opposite. And if I press the button again, it returns to a standard tail light. <coughs> if I press the tail light button, I can change modes. And here I can go to a warning mode. Hey, get the hell off my rear end. You're tailgating me. You're very, you're very close. And then I can change it to a pulsing out to the right if I want to get a more strobe-like effect. And then I can go flat out to the, uh, the solid bar on the back. Very nice feature. So turning left, I can hit that uh, wing light on my handlebars. Same time, I can hit this, and people can see really clearly where I'm about to go. Same thing for turning right. Turn that off. And then again, if I press the taillight button, someone's tailgating me. Hey, you're a little too close. I'd like you to back off. So really nice features there. Here's the best part, because a lot of people get crowded when they're driving on the roads with these things. It comes with a laser light feature. And you can see here, I'm going to walk around. When you press the laser button, it puts a zone behind you and tells everybody, hey, I don't want you to drive in my zone. And if you're really not sure, the laser light will blink. And that keeps people just on the outside periphery of your bike and lets them know, hey, I don't want you there. Okay, so laser features right here. Last but not least, I got a few seconds left in the video. The seat that comes with the bike is garbage. <laughs> it's going to bust your ass. You're going to wish that you'd replaced it. I'll put a link to this one. It's a little fat, but my God, when you sit in it, you could ride forever. First initial thoughts on the motoped. We'll come out with a second video in a couple days when it's sunny. I'm Michael, and I uh, appreciate you checking out this video. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. I'll answer them.